here at Altsy. And I'm really, really, really very excited to welcome someone who is very special for chairing this particular session, whom many of my colleagues from ALT and also some of our members I know have met at the wonderful EdTech conference that our colleagues in Ireland from the Irish Learning Technology Association organize each year. Now, when we took our president, Martin Weller, there this year, we all came back with the clear mission to steal the very best bit of the EdTech conference, and we asked permission, and they kindly let us borrow a very special Tom Farrelly for chairing the session. So, I hope I'm not going to have to do any comparing for the next half an hour, but give it up for Tom, who's going to come on stage now and show you how to gusta. If this bombs, it's Martin Weller's poor lack of judgment. <laughs> Martin Weller, I mean, I, I was like all sort of fanboy, you know, I've been in ed tech and you're living in Ireland and you, you quote this man. And finally we're sitting down at the dinner there and a friend of mine says, what, what did you talk about? Data analytics, is the VLE dead? No, are blind dogs. <laughs> it would be funny if it's not, but it is actually true. That's exactly what we talk about. So yes, yeah, so Gosta. So I suppose the Japanese have uh, Pachachka or Pechakucha which is obviously very organized. This being Irish, is a little bit manic. Um, I mean, talking about conferences, there's, there's, there's an international linguistic conference. And a, a Spanish-speaking uh, linguist, who says to the Irish professor, he says, tell me, do you have an Irish award like manana? The Irish guy talked for a moment, says, I don't think we have a award which, which indicates such a degree of urgency. <laughs> So, an architect can go, this only works, and I have to be honest, I'm very, very nervous. Because, you know, will English people get behind it? Will you be <laughs> sick of the man? You so say, what, what did I take away? That I learned about the latest technology. And try, I mean, do we think about how we actually do our, our work in learning technology? Do we think about power relationships? Do we think about data analytics? No. What I want you to take away from this is how to count the nurse. <laughs> Ask Gwilga. Yeah, but I do. I said, you know, technology, you know, look at YouTube videos. I just took a couple of stills. So we count down each, each gospel will be counted down one, two, three, four, five. So it's important that each and every one of you knows how to count. <laughs> so as I said, there'll be people here who done doctorates and they would have found them easier than the next two minutes. <laughs> I want everybody to join in. Ahayan, the pronunciation, Ahayan. Once again, ahay. 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 That's not bad. <laughs> I, I feel a bit like sort of dough a deer. <laughs> this is actually just dough. It's straightforward. If you've seen Hills of Hills of Hills of Sound of Music, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. That's fairly easy. Now tree. There's not much invention there. A hain, a dough, a tree. Ah, now you think, oh, so, uh, this Irish language is easy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But as anybody who's ever watched Father Chad will know, it's not that easy. I was just telling Laurie Phipps there, my son there, my Jackie's our son, my wife's here. Um, he, he works in Irish Bar in Vancouver. And a few weeks ago, they had a Father Ted and all the bar staff dressed up. And these two Canadians were very afraid of giving insult, as we all are now. And they said, look, I don't want to be rude, but is this an Irish religious festival? <laughs> and he said, we're all serious. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> they 
had a, they had a My Lovely Horse competition. Now, now, four. Give that one a go. So we'll just revise where we are. A hay, a doe, a tree, a carrot. And again, a hay, a doe, a tree, a carrot. Lads, I have to go. I'll be going Max Ender, brilliant over there. Cooey. Yeah? A cooey. Will you try it? A hay, a doe, a tree, a carrot, a cooey. I'm on your own now. You're big enough now. I'm going to take the trees off now. Ready? A hen, a and then, when the person starts off, we give them a good enough tea. Gossip! I don't want to be this loud in this Now, we have already sit here, a man we all know and love, but today he's actually, he's literally the fulcrum of gossip. Gossip, sorry. I've been. And a lot of people said they won't do it, but they have done it. Now, our first count coming up here. Go all the way, no person in the Then we want to just go up here and collect yourself and gather yourself here. Come on. No, you're all right. Don't give her a round of applause. She hasn't deserved it. No. Right. <laughs> now, Peter, there is very go kindly going to give you a three-minute warning and a one-minute warning. You want to learn another Irish word? Me and Mike. Oh. Oh, online. Roger, hello, nigger. Okay. Ken McCarthy in Waterford. Uh, Tony Murphy in Tralee, <laughs> Eamon Costello in Dublin, and if you want to request your today. Now, the Irish word for, for stop is stod. 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 And again? Stod. Stod. Okay. So when we hold her up, it's we stod. I know you mean stop. <laughs> Are we okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be looking at me like that. Like, oh, he'll be easy on me. No. <laughs> In fact, if anything, I've come here, I have to go down America. <laughs> now, we won't, we won't divide up the room left and right here. We'll just do the whole, the whole one to start. If you're ready to go, the clock will start when we shout out. At the last tone of gossip fades out, the clock will start. Are we ready? A hey! A no! A three! No, stop, sir. <laughs> it's like Father Stone here now. In, in <laughs> God love me, it's very clear in the night. Now, the whole idea, as I said, is participation. And will we start that one again? When I raise the flag, we start. Are we ready? A hay, a doe, a tree, a car, a cooey, gossip! Oh, well, that's me. I... <laughs> okay, now see, that's really unfair. I've got to follow that. And then I've got to go before all these lovely people, so I think I'm kind of the warm-up act, but I'll give it a go. Okay, um, so I'm Debbie Baff, and I'm kind of mad on pink, as you might have gathered. Um, I'm a senior academic developer here in Swansea. Um, now, when Maren, lovely Maren, asked me to do a gaster, I went, yeah, that'd be great, because I thought it had something to do with cakes. 
I don't know why, it just kind of conjured up that image. I now know it's nothing whatsoever to do with cakes. So Marin said, all I've got to do, which is great, um, is just talk a bit about my involvement with Alt, really, um, and what my favourite Alt 18, Alt C18 moments have been so far. Bearing in mind, we're only in day two, so I'm sure there'll be wonderful stuff tomorrow, but this is all I've got so far. So here we go, and why I love Alt. Okay. Um, that's a, a synopsis, really, of my uh, summary of my involvement with ALT. I first started to uh, get to know the lovely people in ALT in 2014. Um, and then I did the Octel course. Did anybody do the Octel course? Yeah. Pay me later, Marin. <laughs> um, and I had a, a role working in Wales at that time where I was involved in the OER conferences, so talking about the OER 15 conference where um, I persuaded a certain somebody sitting in the front and a couple of other somebodies <laughs> to come and do the uh, chairing for me. Um, and ever since then, I kind of haven't left, really. So that's kind of all the sorts of things that I've been involved in. Um, the Open Education Special Interest Group, I'll also give a quick plug to, because I know Catherine Cronin is quite keen on uh, mentioning that for this year. So um, if anybody wants to know anything about the OE SIG, then let me or Catherine know. Um, I've also put down there that I'm a CMALT hopeful. I don't know if you remember last year, but we had to do a little I will promise. And last year, I, I will promise to do my CMALT, but I didn't actually do it. So there you go. Hey, right, I'm going to run now. <laughs> okay, fab moments, collaborative learning, Snapchat on the go. Anybody use Snapchat? Two, three, four. Right, we had a bit of an on-the-go session um, on the train before we even got here, which was quite good. So I've never used Snapchat before, so the learning started already. Some more fab moments that we've done. Uh, virtually connecting, I took part in that. That was really cool, really enjoyed that. First time I've been a, a guest on virtually connecting. Two minutes, okay. <laughs> Some more fab moments. This is the lovely Suzanne, juggling. You get juggling at Alt, who'd have thought? I can't juggle, by the way. If she was here, she would be juggling, but I can't do that, so you don't get that. Um, but that's also on YouTube, so if anybody missed that, that's all about our Bring Your Own Device for Learning um, course that we did. Um, there we go. We're on to the why I love alt now. Um, community, you guys, you make it what it is, really. I get such a sense of warmth and energy. Um, so many opportunities to learn. You're always learning something new. And I just get such a buzz out of coming to this conference. It's the highlight of my year, really. Um, you get to feel part of something. I think my professional values, I like to think I'm, I'm an open practitioner. I like to share as much as I can. And above all, we have loads of fun, don't we? And we have some really nice cakes. Anybody have the cakes just now? I hope there's going to be more cakes tomorrow, Marin. Can you promise more cakes, possibly? Yeah. One minute left. <laughs> there we go. I did a little scribble. Um, I didn't have time to finish it, so there's some bits and pieces that I haven't got on there. But I hope that gives you a bit of a flavour. Um, a flavour? See what I did there? Gaster flavour cakes. <laughs> There you go. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think it's great, and uh, I'll be back next year. I'm under time. You have ruined my moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have just a very good start, I mean. Here. Uh, this man, I, my agent, is he here? Coming over, my colleagues from Irish Learning Technology Association. And if you come over to EdTech next year, you can experience more. There is the madness of it. So, uh, coming over for it, we have Laura Widger and Paul Gorman. Come on. I'll be nice to Laura, but Paul is fair game for anything. Here with the hen, the doe, tree, car, and then we all show the cooey, and then we got it. We'll just do a dry run. Are we ready starting with the left? Hey. Hey. The doe. The tree. 
Don't think you've still got the idea here. <laughs> gusto. Not gusto. A bit of gusto. Will you try again? Tom, thanks for that very warm introduction. Uh, delighted to be here on behalf of my colleagues Catherine Brune and Alison Egan, who fortunately couldn't make it, to talk about, okay, the title comes from Paul, it's really difficult, Little Lord Acorns, How They Grow, um, looking at fruitful collaborations among professional bodies that hopefully are yielding bountiful engagements. So who are we? We're the Irish Learning Technology Association, in essence, an independent, voluntary community of professionals committed to the development and exchange of knowledge in TEL in education. We run a number of initiatives in terms of our annual conference, generally about 300 people is on every year in May, hopefully you can make it. Jen Burke Award, a couple of years ago, we were delighted to collaborate with some colleagues nationally in producing the first NMC Technology Outlook for Higher Education in Ireland. We have an open access journal in technology enhanced learning, which Tom is one of the main leaders on and we'll be talking about tomorrow. And we're also delighted that with a couple of our Irish colleagues, in particular uh, one project, which is a special edition of the Tell Journal, which was focused on VLEs, that's up for awards tonight, along with another DCU project. If you want to find out anything more about ILTA, have a look at our website and follow us on Twitter. So why are we here today? As professional bodies, that outside-in perspective is sometimes quite hard to get. And one of the ways we've always been thinking about what are we doing, are we doing it right, are we going in the right direction? and collaborating with other professional bodies, looking at what our colleagues are doing nationally and internationally is always a good way of achieving that. Um, with this in mind, we've been developing our collaborative networks with our colleagues internationally over the last few years. ALT, we signed an MOU with a couple of years ago. We've Askelite, we have our colleagues across the water in the US in terms of the OLC. And we've been looking at how we're developing these networks. And I'm gonna hand over to my colleague, Paul, who's gonna talk about some of the common issues and how we've been addressing them. Uh, thanks, Laura. Uh, so when we looked over the, the, the global uh, garden fence, we identified the following four, uh, I suppose, issues or commonalities, I suppose, at a higher level for professional uh, bodies. So around collaboration, dissemination, governance, and leadership. Um, so we kind of, we, we've all kind of, in, you know, kind of interacted around these issues, and uh, I suppose f identifying the issues is fairly, is, is good, is good, but I suppose operationalizing or sort of addressing them in a collaborative fashion is another, another day's work. So the ways that we've done things recently, uh, so for example, we've worked on, well, how, how did we do it? We got involved, essentially. And so we got involved with projects like the Blended Learning Essentials, uh, recruitment of tutors, for example, in terms of uh, continuing professional development. We've got a partnership with Alt around CMALT. We've engaged with the uh, IELOL uh, professional development uh, strategy from the OLC, and there's an EU uh, equivalent called Empower. We're always uh, mindful of promoting each other's activities, so we do a lot of crowdsourcing for, for projects. Uh, we obviously will, we, we do a lot of uh, conference participation, so we have under the MOU that all comes to us and we go, go, go to their conferences as well. And we'd love to see uh, some of you over well, increasingly, there are a lot of ALT members who are coming over to us uh, for, for our conference. And importantly, around cons uh, consultancy, around uh, governance, for example, uh, around steering groups that we might have in our respective organizations. So, for example, we've got a rep we've got representative on the, uh, the strategic plan or the strategic group for research and learning technologies. So a lot of this stuff is very reciprocal and uh, very useful for all of us. Okay, so... Uh, uh, where are we now then? Uh, obviously, all of the, uh, the professional bodies are geographically dispersed, but we were lucky last year for last year's uh, EdTech conference where uh, we managed to get most of the heads of the bodies together, which, which was absolutely fantastic, at the EdTech conference in Ireland. So from left to right, it's, we've got Don Parrish on the left uh, from Ascolite, Martin Weller uh, down here, uh, who is ubiquitous anyway. Uh, we've got Meg Benke, who was uh, um, talking about um, uh, the OLC, myself, and then Marin. Um, see you. <laughs> what are we doing next? We're looking at uh, we're looking around uh, leadership program webinar series to put together so that we can kind of do some comparative analysis globally in terms of how people are addressing the e-leadership, uh, I suppose, narrative. Looking at quality assurance standards for uh, blended learning through uh, the, looking at um, 
I suppose uh, we're, we're finding it difficult, certainly in Ireland, to, to get those standards through, so we're, we're, we're looking forward to uh, collaborating with others. And for us, oppressingly, uh, the, we, we're going through a, a, a change in ILTA governance. Five, four, three. And it's been great to see you all. And come to EdTech next year. This is a savage, savage method. Thanks, <laughs> sir. So you have to leave me at my closing line. So it's in EdTech next year. We're not sure we'll have lifesavers, but we'll definitely have Tom. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, family from Ascoloid is watching in. I'm not absolutely available to go wherever it is there. Anyway, uh, no, the talking is, no, the, the timing is a bit first. And I've just contacted a colleague, a friend there, I've just asked her if it's okay to her. She, the therapy had worked. But her very first Augusta, she just thought, she was told, in fairness, she was told in seven minutes and found out it was five minutes on the day. So that wasn't the right thing to do. But harsh, but fair. <laughs> now, uh, Clint Lalande is now joining us up here now. So uh, we we'll just let him get himself ready. Now, this time I think we won't be on left and right, but we will be on left and right. But it's a bit of sort of lateral movement. So as we count, we'll all start off to the left, to the right. Because they're just it's sort of the whole Max Boy graphs, you know, they're sort of, they're sort of the hands and they go on. Right, so we're just doing a bit of warm up before you can get started out. You don't have to show anything to the hand move. I'm watching Gary, who's not getting the ball. Don't get me down! Okay, that's enough, we just have to wear you out. Are we ready for this? Yeah, we're ready. Because uh, it's tight. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're ready. We're ready. Yeah. So we'll all start yeah. off, and you'll all start off to your left. Oscar Elga, okay. are we ready? Uh, hey! And go! And three! All right, I've titled my Gasta, When I Grow Up, I Want to Be a Learning Technologist. Ah, said no child ever. Um, five minutes is too short for a long intro on who I am, but suffice to say, I wear a whole bunch of different hats back in British Columbia where I work. I'm the manager of EdTech for a regional consortium called BC Campus. Uh, I'm also associate faculty at uh, Royal Roads University in the School of Education and Technology, and I'm a community steward for an organization in BC similar to ALT called ETUG, the Educational Technology User Group. Um, in addition to this being the 25th anniversary of ALT, it is also next year the 25th anniversary of ETUG, and next year is also my personal 25th anniversary uh, as an educational technologist, learning technologist. Uh, although, to be honest, for the first 10 years of my career, I didn't actually know that I was an educational technologist. Uh, it's a career that I fell into, and I suspect I'm not the only one in the room that fell into it. Uh, at any rate, when I was a kid, growing up in northern Canada, like most kids, my childhood dreams, this is for Martin, <laughs> were, uh, were to become a professional ice hockey player. But once I realized that you actually have to have some skills to become a professional hockey player, uh, I altered my dream to something that I thought was a little bit more achievable. I wanted to be a professional Nessie hunter. Uh, I even had a backup plan should Nessie hunting fall through. See, in Canada we have this similar mythical creature called the Ogopogo in Lake Okanagan. So I thought, well, if I couldn't make the big show in Scotland hunting Nessie, I could try my luck in the local leagues at uh, Lake Okanagan. But at no time did I dream of becoming a learning technologist. Uh, but 25 years later, here I am, and here's a few things I've noticed in our field. So here's three things. First off, um, education technology has become simpler and more complex. Um, sorry for any mathematicians who have actually mangled a mathematical, mathematical word there in simplex, but um, let me explain. Um, on the simple side, in 2007, when I used Skype for the first time to bring a guest speaker into a class for an instructor, it took me six weeks to coordinate this. And the biggest hurdle I had was convincing our IT department that this new thing called Skype wasn't some kind of secret backdoor into our network for Eastern European hackers. Uh, uh, you know, Skype traffic in and out of our network? I don't know about that. Um, today, I digitally... Uh, digitally literate uh, instructor can bring a, a guest into their classroom in about five minutes. Uh, on the uh, more complex side, uh, I doubt the learning technologist of uh, 1994 had to worry things about things like the student data retention policy of the overhead projector sitting in the corner of the room. 
Which brings me to observation number two. Learning technology has become more critical. I think this is an area that we can continue to grow in, but we've made some great strides in, especially in the past five to 10 years, uh, thanks in no small part to a lot of people who are at this conference who uh, I really admire the critical work uh, that they're doing. Early in my career, I was often cast in the role of, um, uh, of being an uh, evangelist, and some of you may have had that uh, in your title at one time, it was quite vogue to be an evangelist. Um, today we're much less evangelists and, and much more critical of not only technology, but often the unseen processes and unspoken processes that drive technology adoption in education. And I'm happy to be at a conference actually that has an entire stream dedicated to critical perspectives in learning technology. Uh, finally, observation number three, a learning technologist is not an instructional designer. Um, Perhaps it's the Canadian in me that phrases this as a not, because sometimes when you ask a Canadian who they are, the answer you get is not American. <laughs> uh, but I don't mean this pejoratively, uh, and I don't mean to pit these roles against each other, because both are valuable and important roles in maintaining high standards of teaching and learning excellence in our institutions. But I really do think that these are two separate roles. They're complementary and need to be informed by each other's practice, but distinct fields requiring different skills and attributes. And I often feel that the profession that we call learning technologist or educational technologist is often undervalued in our institutions. And they tend to get tacked on to an equally important, uh, but really for me a separate role, and that is instructional designer. Uh, it's this third point that's actually brought me to ALT this year because I think ALT has a really good model in the CMALT program to help raise the profile of learning technologists. Uh, and it's something that I'm hoping that I can possibly bring back to Canada uh, and one of the reasons why I'm here is to learn much more about CMALT. Okay, there you go. In the end, uh, not the career I dreamed of as a kid, no professional hockey careers uh, for me, but uh, I can honestly say that now I've arrived, uh, there's not another career that I would rather be doing. Thank you. So, I, I should sort of say that, that I mean, these are sort of very brief sort of throwing out ideas, so I would encourage people, if, if anybody has raised something or something, to have a chat with them afterwards like that. So, uh, we're, uh, I just have to check with Donna, but I just thought that it's a beautiful name, it's Donna Lang Paul. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was, that's, that's not bad. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not bad. No. Yeah. no, I was just saying to Paul, if we have EdTech next year, it's like, it's like a TED talk, I've never had these, like, these fancy things like that, so I think that's certainly, uh, added to the whole, the whole thing. So no, I'm just sort of say, by the way, you've been a great, uh, great participator. We've just sort of upped the ante now a little bit more. So what we do now, because I think it's, at this stage you've been doing a lot of sitting all day. It's good for the, the old veins. So we start off in the standing position, uh, uh, for, the, for the one, then we go down to the left, a hane, and then, no, you have to fully sit down. So it's a hane, a dog, a tree, a cat, a buoy, arms up for the gospel. We all stand up, come on. It's late in the day. This is, this is actually good for your health. I mean, I'm actually going to stop deep vein thrombosis and all of this. And, and also, what, I can here with Skype and learning technology. Anybody who's watching on the stream, if you want to get one of your friends to photograph you taking part in these sort of warm up exercises. Are we all ready? A hay, a doe, a tree, a car, a coo, all right. Is this thing? Yeah. I am not a learning technologist. I'm an anthropologist. My name is Donna, and I have opinions about things. Um, and I'm not going to apologize for that. Um, so in the work that I get to do in this sector, which is weird for me because I am not of the sector, but anthropologists work outside of everywhere they are, so that's fine. I have been tasked occasionally with going in and having people talk about what they do when they go online to do teaching and learning things. And early on, I was doing this thing that some of you may be familiar with, mapping practice using visitors and residents, and we were um, arguing against natives and immigrants because we didn't want people to pigeonhole themselves in really, really, really not useful ways. And so what ended up happening, of course, was that people started to pigeonhole themselves in the different way that we had given them because we were still talking about identity. And what I wanted to do was have them talk about practice. 
So this triangle represents the opportunity that they have to talk about what they do, regardless of who they are. And I think that one of the things that ends up coming up over and over again is when people talk about what they do, they end up talking about the people among whom they do these things. So we start off with practice, and all of a sudden we're talking about people. We're talking about the places that they go because there are certain people there. They talk about the places that they don't want to go to because there are certain people there. They're talking about networks. They're talking about the networks that they have. They're talking about the networks that they want to have. They're talking about the networks that they avoid because they're toxic and they don't serve them. People don't get enough of an opportunity to talk about these sorts of things. And I think it's wrong. I think that there's too much emphasis on what are you going to do? Where are you going to do it? And not enough about with whom are you going to do it and why are you going to do that? So, the other thing that ends up happening when we have people map their practices is that they talk a lot about visibility. We talk about people who are stars on social media. We talk about the people that we see all the time. They shine so brightly. I see them everywhere. Surely I know who that person is because I can see them all the time. And you might know some things, but you don't know everything. You know the things that they show you. That doesn't mean you know them. You can interpret the things that they show you, and they can make deliberate choices about the things that they show you, but that's not the same thing as knowing. So when I think about people and their practices, and I think about the ways that we want to encourage people to do things, I think that too often we get bogged down in, but who can see me? And look at that person over there, and aren't they amazing? I want people to think about the intimacy of their practices. I want people to think with people who care for them. One of the things that my mother and I do together when we have an opportunity to walk is we walk at dusk and we peer in people's windows because we want to be opinionated about the color that they painted the wall and the sofa that they chose. And you do it at dusk because they haven't gone the blinds down yet and you can see into. So, one of the exercises that I have started doing with my colleague Lori Phipps is based on the idea of a window, that you open a window into your practice and you invite people to look in the window and talk to you about what they see about your practice. Not just the stuff that's visible, but the stuff they know about because they know you and because you trust them to tell them things about what it means. I feel like a window is an inadequate metaphor, the sort of thing that I'm trying to encourage people to do here. I'm trying to encourage people to leverage their intimate networks of people who care about them, not random workshops of people who you just met, who can Google you and think that they know you if you're visible. I want for people to talk with the people who you want to invite into your home. Who are the people who are already in your network? How can you open a door to the people that you want to hear from about your practice and what it means, what it means to you and what it means to them? How do we create those moments of intimate reflection, places of care that don't come from some abstracted notion of visibility and importance, Five, four, but from home? Three, two, one. Start. Start. I don't know what it says about the Irish psyche, but the only two people who've gone over time were my fellow compatriots and colleagues. It's like sort of Daryl O'Brien sort of says, like, other companies have rules and guidelines and laws. We have Asher. I shouldn't really do that. <laughs> As he said, we have a finer understanding of the greater condition of the human psyche. So, we have... Um, uh, Leo Heberman coming up for last but not least. A good round of applause for him. So, would anyone, uh, Laurie, have anybody tweeted in showing themselves going up and down? Or? I've already tweeted, you do. Oh, excellent. Eamon Costello, Tony Moore, if you're, if you're watching in, you should be doing this. So, I've got you to do a bit of physical exercise, then we're going to do a bit of mental exercise. You've been absolutely excellent at the Hango Tree Cartoon. But how do you fancy doing? 
Cui Car Three Do Hey. Have you a dry run? Oh, this could end badly, Mark. This could end very badly. But you know what? I have great faith in this group. You've been absolutely excellent. Better than the useless lot of I normally do it with every May. No, honestly, you really have to know. I was honestly so nervous that this wouldn't work. Like, how would this work? You have been absolutely brilliant. So we'll just do a dry run because we won't, we won't put Leo off. So it'll be Cooey, Car, Three, Do, A. Hey. Ready? Cooey, Car, Three, Do, A. Hey. Well, you don't need rehearsals at all. They're really good. I thought that this would be great. That's useless. Anyway, so are we ready? And a big, really loud this time, and a huge gust this time. Are we ready? Three, four, three, go, hey, gas Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, some of you, no doubt, in this room will recognise what this image is is of. Um, slightly blurry, and not the best quality, sorry about that. Uh, but, but uh, and I will now explain it for those who don't know. In recognition of this auspicious occasion of 25 years of Alt-C, I wanted to talk a bit about my personal experience of Alt and the role that it's played for me. And so I first became involved in Alt around 10 years ago, um, as many in this room might say, only 10 years ago, uh, when I started attending the M25 Learning Technology Group. Uh, technically, actually, at that time, the M25 Learning Technology Group was not yet actually an alt sig um, that was soon to follow it was on the horizon precisely because the community attending m25 were very much aligned in spirit and overlapping also in um, in, in practice uh, with the wider alt community and really i have to say joining that group was a surprisingly transformative experience to have when attending an event named after a motorway the m25 has been had been named when it was originally set up in the early noughties to be a group in which learning technologists and their ilk and their variants um, could meet up and talk about what they've been doing. Because normally uh, in this type of role, you're working in smallish teams within an institution. Sometimes you need to learn some new stuff or even just for your own sanity, really you need to get out and talk to other people. And so uh, the meetings of the M25 are generally a presentation and Q&A format, sometimes through other kinds of, uh, of more experimental formats as well, um, or with, uh, with special guests. And after attending and participating in this group for a few years, I managed to replace someone who'd stepped down from the organizing group, um, uh, or as Alt call us, the officers. Um, sometimes we like to call ourselves the admirals. Um, so the, uh, the M25 group, I like to think, exemplifies the Alt spirit. It's an alt in microcosm, um, by the community, for the community, or as one, as one could say, in the M25 and indeed in alt, the community is the curriculum. What makes this possible is that our community is blessed by willingness or an openness, if, uh, if you like, to discuss our practices and our obstacles and to share our work in progress that sometimes doesn't quite look like a solution just yet. Ah, yes. Solutions. Remember solutions. Industry was awash with them a few years back. Um, IT companies were so advanced then, I know I was working in them at the time, um, they knew your solution already before they even knew what your problem was. And uh, I think now the language has somewhat um, evolved over time, but solutionism certainly persists. And it still pays to be wary of the kind of solutions that can be purchased with a license fee. In fact, what's, uh, what I think is great about the alt community is that over the years we have got better at talking about problems that we recognize are difficult, wicked and intractable, that no solution, especially off the shelf, is going to provide a quick fix to. Uh, so how, how does the alt community do that? I love this, um, this um, alt image um, about being greater than the sum of our parts. The alt community through its conferences, its special interest groups, its mailing list, um, and really importantly also through its open access journal, Research and Learning Technology, which I have a peer review overdue for right now, uh, opens up spaces for sharing and increasing our understanding of these problems. Human problems about coping with change, about supporting colleagues and students, about limited resources and contexts where the need for our assistance is great. 
These spaces and the conversations that are able to be contained within them are a lifeline to those of us working in this field. And through participating in them, personally, I've gained knowledge, support, a professional network to turn to when needed, but also colleagues and friends who are a vital part of making this work worth doing. <coughs> so yes, don't bring me solutions, bring me problems. Thank you, Alt. Thank you all. I want to start with a little bit of pressure for time, but I'll just take a few seconds. First of all, thanks very much to Peter and Larry for helping me keep this madness on, on, on track very much. Uh, our, our, all our, big, our, our participants, I should say, uh, who well, it's not easy coming up here, and I'm sure they didn't know what to expect. Um, most of all, I mean, this works because everybody gets involved. So, from myself, uh, a thousand uh, thank yous. Uh, Thanks very much to Martin and Myron for taking this fight, and thanks to Deborah. Cheers.